Hi, uh, good to see you. I'm Mark, and today we're going to do Unit 2. We're going to start Unit 2 of uh, Present Yourself, Book 2. Um, but before we get into the book, I'd like to deal with something. Most of us, when we're dealing with presentations um, or any kind of public speaking, public being in, in public, um, keeping calm, dealing with our nerves is often an issue and something I find useful um, for myself and for my students is something called Sarnoff's Wheel. And this is just a series of sentences that you can say to yourself um, before you start speaking and it's just it's a good message but it will also help you calm your nervous nerves deal with nervousness. So can I ask you to stand up? And I know this is a little weird on video. You're probably alone watching this. Why should I stand up? Well, because most of the time when you do public speaking, you're going to be standing up. And part of what we're trying to do in this course is simulate that to make you ready for it. So make, to make it when you're really in front of an audience, you're prepared. So can you all stand up? Put your feet about shoulder width. So your body, it forms kind of like the letter A, right? You're, it, this is just a stronger position. One of the things your book has already mentioned is don't put your feet together because if you do, you sway like that. So your feet are shoulder width. Your body's like this. And then to start, just repeat these sentences after me, okay? Um, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad you're here. I have something special. I will give it to you. Good. Now let's say it together. You say it at the same time as me. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad you are here. I have something special. I will give it to you. Great. Now let's do it. How would, if you do it on your own three times, please do it out loud because the act of saying it is what gets you in the right mental area, the right, the right mood. Okay? I'll mouth it, but you're saying it out loud three times. Okay, great. Now we're going to add one more thing to it, and that's stress. The stress, the loudest words, make a huge amount of difference in English, okay? In that first line, I'm glad to be here, what's the most important word? Probably glad. So can you say, I'm glad to be here, right? Not, I'm glad to be here, but I'm glad to be here, stress glad. Uh, I'm glad to be here. Next line, what's the most important? Probably you, the audience. I'm glad you are here. Next line. Special. I have something special. Next line. Give. I'll give it to you. So let's try it together. Um, say it, and can you clap on the most important word? Because you're trying to emphasize that. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad you are here. I have something special. I will give it to you. Okay? Now, let's do it three times silently. You, I mean, you, you're doing it out loud, just not with me. Okay? You're doing it out loud. Don't clap this time, but make sure that word is loudest. And if you can, don't look directly at your computer. Try to remember it and look about 
three or four meters away, as if you were talking to a real audience, okay? Three times. Okay, once more together, everybody out loud. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad you are here. I have something special. I will give it to you. Okay, great. Um, I should add, perhaps, uh, I learned this from a teacher in uh, Kansai, um, Curtis Kelly. This is not from the book, but I find it a very useful thing to add. We're going to, uh, as I said, start on page, oops, wrong page. Uh, we're going to start on page 20, a great vacation idea. Okay? And on page 20, you can see many great vacation options. Okay. Um, I'm just going over this to make sure you know the vocabulary. A wildlife safari. Okay. Um, a beach resort getaway. You all know the beach, going to the sea. The getaway part sounds like it's not crowded. Maybe like a little cabin or a little house way on the beach, but away from other people. So it's kind of private. A cultural sightseeing tour. The picture um, in, the, in the book is, um, I think that's Tower Bridge in London, but you can do this anywhere in the world. If you're in Japan, going to Fujisan or going to um, Kyoto, someplace like that. An adventure trek right? Sounds like a nature adventure. Adventure. They're doing whitewater rafting there. If you ever get a chance, do it. It's great. Uh, a rainforest eco-tour. Ecology tour. Eco-tourism or eco-tourism um, is more and more popular and it's a great, it's a great way to take a, a holiday. A luxury cruise. A cruise on a big boat. Now, I'm guessing you know those words, and um, I'm trying to make this video reasonably short. If any of those are new, please do the rest of page 20, because if you didn't know those, you probably need the vocabulary work. But if you do know it, let's go on to page 21. At the top of page 21, there's a survey. Do you like to travel? Why or why not? Do you prefer to travel in your own country or overseas? Why? And I'm recording this in the middle of COVID where we can't go overseas, um, but we all wish we could travel. We can't even travel in the country. Um, what I'd like you to do is, because maybe... I don't know if this video is going to be used for studying on your own on-demand classes or being used to supplement, for example, a Zoom class. So if you are working alone, an on-demand class, please stop the video and answer the questions on page 21, top part and the bottom part, and really take the time to do this. I know if you don't, your teacher, me, might not know, but that's not the point. The point is what you learn and what you learn to do in this course. If you are studying with other students, for example, in a Zoom class, or even if your friend's in the class and you're, you're studying on demand, call them up. Use Line, use, use um, 
Skype, something like that, and do the speaking activities together with your friend. Okay? We'll go on. We won't spend um, time on this, but these are really good preview questions to think about a great vacation idea. And while you're working on this unit, the goal of this unit is you're going to do a presentation about a wonderful vacation place. This might be some place that you've been and want to share. It might be some place that you've never been, but you want to, right? And so that you can research and talk about. So be thinking about what you want to talk about. On page 22, we have uh, three places, uh, one of which you know, one of which you probably don't know, and the other one, maybe, maybe not. The places are Goa, which is uh, in India, Borneo, which is in Southeast Asia, and Rome. Um, what I'd like you to do is listen to three short mini presentations. They're actually parts of longer presentations. And, um, oh, and do what the task says. There's a different task each time. Now, what you need to do first is find out where these are. You see, at the top, it gives you the three pictures. I'm sorry, I'm, I don't... Here, here's the pictures. Goa, Borneo, and Rome. And listen, and, and then listen to the presenters, Sophie, Jason, and Emma. And they're describing the places. Now, what you need to know, this is on page 22, step B. There are mistakes. Listen Try to find the mistakes. Try to correct them. Okay? Now, a word of caution. I am showing you a video of a video. I'm putting the video on the screen in my classroom. It's not as clear as if you watch it directly. If you want to watch it directly, the URL is on the back of your book, okay, right there. The advantage of watching it directly is it's easier to review, okay? That's harder for me to do in the video. I tried to do this on Zoom recordings and it didn't work, so I'm doing it this way. But let me show you um, this time... Uh, this is going to be true throughout the videos of, of uh, this course. Um, if you want to find the video directly, it's not as simple as I wish it was. You go to th this URL, okay? And that takes you to this page. It says, Present Yourself, Second Edition, product details, components, resources. You want resources. So click that, okay, and then it shows course level. There's level one and level two. We are using level two. So click that, okay? And now, here's where it's a little bit confusing. We are in Unit 2, and it says on page 22 that we want video number 9. Okay, here's the part that's confusing. In the back of the book, there are many expansion activities. Okay, uh, expansion means extra. Expansion starts with the letter E. Unit starts with the letter U. So in, the, in this website, the expansion activities are first. The regular unit activities are second. Okay? So we actually start 
Okay, the regular unit activities start on page three of this website. Um, we're on unit two, so we actually want to go to page four. You see the numbers, uh, one, two, three, four. Click on four. Okay, and that will, why is it not getting me there? Oh, because I'm already there. Hi. And then I go to uh, present yourself, second edition, present yourself, unit two, clip nine. And that gets me to the video I want. Okay? I've turned on the subtitles so you can read them. Subtitles means GMAX Super. And I'll play it all the way through. Now, you might want to stop the video to give yourself time to think. You might want to repeat the video two or three times. Totally up to you. Do whatever helps you learn and understand. Okay? So, video, first one is uh, Sophie. So, I'm going to turn on video nine. Borneo is the largest island in Southeast Asia and one of the most exotic destinations in the world. Located between Manila, Jakarta, and Singapore, the island of Borneo is divided among three countries, Brunei, Malaysia, and Indonesia. The island has one of the oldest rainforests in the world. It's 130 million years old, as well as one of the world's longest underground rivers. Borneo is famous for its rare wildlife, tropical rainforests, and colorful marine life in the surrounding sea. Visitors to Borneo can enjoy a variety of amazing eco-friendly activities, which offer them a chance to discover untouched nature firsthand. Okay, as I said, feel free to play it again one or two times did you find the mistakes in the book? Correct them. Okay? Next is Jason talking about Rome. Rome, the capital of Italy, was called the Eternal City by ancient poets because of its long history of power. Even now, the Eternal City is a European destination everyone should visit at least once. Situated on the Tiber River, right in the center of Italy, Rome is one of the most interesting, romantic, historic, and beautiful cities in the world. It's known for its ancient civilization, classical architecture, lovely fountains, and fantastic museums. But that's not all. Rome also offers visitors the chance to enjoy creamy cappuccinos in outdoor cafes, delicious pasta in cozy restaurants, and elegant clothing boutiques on scenic boulevards. For visitors, Rome has it all. History, art, culture, food, and fashion. Okay, that's Rome. Again, listen again if you'd like to. And finally, Emma, who will tell us about Goa. If you want to combine amazing temples and palaces, colorful customs, exotic music, and spicy cuisine, India is the perfect choice. And if you also want a beautiful white sand beach, Goa is the place for you. Goa is India's smallest state, and it's located on the west coast on the Arabian Sea. It's best known for its postcard-perfect tropical beaches that attract visitors from all over the world. However, Goa also offers a fascinating mix of Indian and Portuguese cultures and architecture from the 16th century when Goa was a colony of Portugal. <coughs> its unique cultural history has attracted many artists to live and work in this colorful state. Okay, 
Now we could, oh, that's not like gonna let me turn that off. Um, let me go back here. Go back to the page. If you're working with a partner, if you're doing this in class or, or, or whether it's a face-to-face -face or a Zoom, with your partner, please go through and see if you got, if you found the same mistakes, okay? Um, maybe turn off this video for a minute or so while you have time to check. After that, I'll tell you what it should be. Okay, here we go. Your book tells you that it's the largest island in Southeast Asia. Uh, here are the other corrections. It's divided among three nations, not two. Um, okay. It has some of the oldest uh, rainforests in the world. And you can enjoy eco-friendly activities, not extreme sports. Okay, Rome, it's in central Italy, not northern. Classical architecture. Um, elegant clothing boutiques. And finally, history, art, not sports, but just culture food and fashion, although I think anybody who's been to Italy knows that sport, football, is very, very popular. Finally, Goa is in on the west coast of India, um, attracts visitors from all over the world, and the cultural mix is Indian plus Portuguese. Okay, now step C in your book is to go back, watch and listen, watch again, and add one more detail. That's up to you. If you want, rewind the video or, re or redo it on, on the website and try to find the extra information. Okay? Uh, turn your video off um, or rewind it while you do that. And then when you get back, here are the possible answers for 1C. Borneo, it has one of the longest underground rivers, and there's colorful marine life. Rome, fantastic museums, outdoor cafes. And Goa, amazing temples and palaces. It was a colony of Portugal. Okay, can you now, we're starting to move to your presentation, okay? Um, Think about your country. Think about where you live. Uh, I live in Sendai, so I invite my students to think about the Sendai, Japan. Think about the main tourist areas of Japan. So I might think about Hokkaido, Tohoku, northern, north, northern Japan, northeast Japan, where I live, the Kanto area around Tokyo, the um, the middle of the country around Nagoya, Chubu, Chubu, and the Kansai, and then for me everything south. Although I might make Okinawa a separate one just because it's such a wonderful place to visit. But I would think I'd encourage you to think about if you were going to Tohoku, what would you see? If you were going to Tokyo. The Tokyo, the Kanto, the Kanto area, what would you see? And not just Disney resorts. What else? There's lots of stuff there. Okay, think about the different uh, parts of the, the country. And please look at the orange box. Okay? Now, a couple ways to do this. You could study this yourself or repeat after me. I'll read the sentences in the orange box. You repeat them. It's situated in the north of the country. This place is located in Southeast Asia. This place is between X and Y. For example, 
uh, Mount Fuji is between Tokyo and Nagoya. It's one of the most beautiful places in the world. It's one of the most famous places in the world. It's known for its white sand beaches. It's famous for its rare wildlife. It offers visitors a chance to see beautiful waterfalls. It offers visitors chances to discover local food. Okay? Now, what I'd like you to do is turn off the video. Practice either alone talking about different places in your area, your part of the country or your country, or talk about places anywhere in the world. If you have a partner, talk about places, again, in your country or around the world. Partner, guess what, what you're talking about. Please spend four or five minutes, at least, practicing this language. This is the language you're going to need for your presentation, okay? So please stop the video, practice, even if you're alone, practice, and then come back when you're ready to go on to the next part. Okay, we're on page 23 now. Um, we're going to hear more about Borneo, Rome, and Goa. Page 22 just introduce the places. Where is it? What is it? What are the key features? Now we're talking on page 23, activities and accommodation. Activities, what are you going to do there? Accommodation, where can you stay? We always think of, uh, of tourists staying in hotels, but that's only one choice. There are so many different possibilities. Okay? Please read, before we listen, please read the sentences at the, the top half of page 23. Then when you're ready, listen, write the missing words. Visitors to Borneo can enjoy lots of eco-friendly activities. For example, you can explore the amazing jungle. You can cruise up river by traditional boat and then hike through the rainforest to see endangered orangutans in their natural habitat. It's also possible to go on a night safari to hear the wildlife that's active after sunset. Another thrilling experience is to swim in the beautiful lake on Kakaban Island, surrounded by hundreds of stingless jellyfish that can't hurt you. That's a highlight for most visitors. As for accommodation, one possibility is to stay a few nights at a rainforest campsite. You can stay in simple tents, completely made of natural materials, to give you the total eco experience. There's Okay, listen, listen and watch again if you'd like, compare with a partner if you'd like, and then go on and we'll learn about Rome. So much to do in Rome, you won't know where to begin. Here are just a few ideas. Be sure to climb to the top of Capitoline Hill to view the ancient Roman Forum. I also recommend visiting the Borghese Gallery to see the artworks by the Italian masters. And you should also make time to see Trevi Fountain at night when it's all lit up. It's really magical. From there, you can stroll around the Campo de Fiori, one of the oldest markets in Rome. It's very lively at night. To relax, sip an espresso at one of the open air cafes. As for hotels, there are lots of choices, but I'd suggest staying in a bed and breakfast near Manzoni Station in the heart of the city. Okay, and again, watch again if you'd like, compare with a partner, 
And we'll go on to Emma. For most Goa visitors, the beach is the center of interest. And it's fun to try water sports, such as parasailing, windsurfing, and jet skiing. But you should also enjoy Goa's other attractions. Here are a few recommendations. Hire a bike and cycle around the nearby rice fields. Visit the 450-year-old Say Cathedral with its lovely Portuguese style. Bargain for local souvenirs at Anjuna Flea Market. Eat the South Indian pancake specialty, masala dosa. And last but not least, take a yoga class. When it comes to accommodations, there are lots of small, family-run guest houses with clean rooms for as little as $20 a night. That means budget travelers will be very happy. Okay, um, two things. If you're going to watch it again, something I'd encourage you to notice is um, all of the presenters used note cards, not pieces of paper for their presentation. This has come up in the book before, but it's very, very important. Paper does two things. Number one, it's very big and it's very easy to cover your face. And that stops eye contact. It, it gets in the way of communication. And paper is actually very noisy, right? Use a note card to write your notes. And um, note cards don't make noise. And you usually, you hold them here, hold them in front of your chest, you can see your notes. It doesn't block you from the audience. So if you're watching again, please notice how the presenters use that. Now again, if you're with a partner, please check, um, check your answers. See if you got the same ones. And then I'll tell you uh, what the book suggests for the answers. Okay, ready? Page 23, Borneo, explore the jungle. Cruise upriver by traditional boat. Hike through the rainforest. Uh, go on a night safari. Hear the wildlife. Swim in the beautiful lake. Okay. Rome. Climb to the top of Capitoline Hill. View the ancient forum. Visit the Borizet Gallery. Um, see Trevi Fountain at night. Um, stroll around the Campo di, Fl di Flori Market. Stroll means walk slowly. And sip espresso uh, at an open air cafe. And finally, Goa, try water sports. Uh, she suggested parasailing. Do it if you get a chance. Um, cycle around the rice fields. Visit the cathedral, say cathedral. Um, bargain for local souvenirs. Bargain means the prices are not set. You... They say how much, you give a price that's lower, they, give, they say, no, 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 you say, how about, and you, you negotiate. Um, eat masala dosa and take a yoga class. Okay, um, step B, watch the video again and um, try to catch the information about accommodation, okay? Again, I won't play the video again. Please rewind the video or check the website. And then when you're ready, check the answer. With me, okay? Um, Borneo, a rainforest campsite. Remember we said there's so much more than hotels, right? Campsites roam a bed and breakfast. This is usually a private house, private home 
where they just rent out the bedroom and you get breakfast too. Um, it's like Airbnb. Um, or a family-run guest house. Um, okay, guess it's a little bit like a minshuku. Okay, not exactly, but but same idea. Okay, now bottom of page twenty-three. Let's go. Um, again, you're thinking about a vacation exercise. Um, the book says use one of these. I suggest use something from your country, especially someplace that you've been. And especially, especially if it's someplace that not everybody knows. Okay? Let's do a quick listen and repeat with the sentences on page 23. You can try water sports. You'll be able to relax on the beach. You'll have a chance to ride an elephant. You'll have an opportunity to swim with elephants. If you ever get a chance, do it. It's so cool. It's possible to see wild animals. It's fun to see the monkeys. One possibility is to swim in the river. One possibility is swimming with elephants. You should make time to see Trevi Fountain. I recommend you climb the mountains. I suggest seeing the night bazaar. My recommendation is to stay in a youth hostel. Stay in a bed and breakfast. My suggestion is spend a night camping. Okay. Hi. Now here's a part, this is not from the book, but this is my assignment. Um, what I'd like you to do, as I said, in this unit we're, we're moving toward a big presentation about someplace really special. But please think of some place you have been. Go to, oh, I lost the picture. So I will try to open it up again quickly. And go to Flipgrid. Please record a short presentation minute and a half, two minutes, something like that, about some place that you have been, okay? This is not your final presentation. The final presentation may be about this place. It may be about something totally different. I'm suggesting start with some place you've been because you know it. And use Sophia, Jason, and Emma's mini presentation as a model. Talk about some of the things. Talk about what makes the place special. Talk about the activities you can do there. And talk about the accommodations. So please make a short presentation on Flipgrid. And then go back and please make a comment about one or two, at least two, partners' presentations. Okay? because you're well on your way to being able to describe a really, really cool place for a vacation. Okay, see you next time.